Good day everyone, with great pleasure I offer you all a cheerful reception to this week's episode of Short Sound Production Series, a weekly video tutorial to educate, guide and guide us in the production of sound in our respective place of worship. Please allow me to convey my appreciation to you all as usual for watching Short Sound Production Series on a weekly basis. Please and please do not give up on me. Keep sharing, sharing, and sharing until it gets to the uttermost part of the earth. Also, thanks for the encouragement and diverse support. If you are new to this channel, my name is Mark Adebayo. Are you inspired having watched some of my tutorials and would like to watch more? Please and please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button on the screen. Likewise, the notification bell so you can be informed when there is a fresh video. Go nowhere, I'll be back soon after this short break. Glad to have you back. Last week, on Chuck Sound Production Series, we discussed the microphone, an example of an input device on the sound equipment as a component of sound production. Still on the classes of microphones, we discussed the condenser microphone as a type of microphone. In today's episode of Chart Sound Production Series, the microphone part 5, we shall be discussing microphone directionality, also known as polar patterns. A quick definition. A microphone's polar pattern is the three-dimensional space surrounding the capsule where it is most sensitive to sound. The three basic patterns are 1. Omnidirectional, 2. Bidirectional, and cardioid directional. On your screen is a diagram that shows how it looks like. My one has an omnidirectional pattern, meaning the entire red area is equally sensitive to the sound. My two has a bidirectional pattern, that is figure 8, meaning the two blue areas on the front and back are sensitive while the sides are ignored. My three has a cardioid pattern, meaning the green area in front of the mic is the most sensitive, the sides are less sensitive, and the rear is ignored. Moreover, there are common variations other than the three basic patterns you also see which are supercardioid, which is like cardioid but narrower with a small bulb of rare sensitivity. Also, we have the hypercardioid, which is like supercardioid but narrow still but with a large bulb in the rear. Some mics known as multi-pattern mics allow you to switch between several polar patterns options as needed. An example is the Beringer B2. As the polar pattern varies from one type of microphone to another, the application also differs. So now let's talk about when to use cardioid microphones. The advantage of using cardioid mics seems simple, right? It records where you point it and ignores everything else, which is why it is the obvious choice for vocal mics. But here are some less obvious examples when it's especially useful. 1. Miking up a drum kit. With so many instruments so close together, isolation might seem impossible, but it can be done with the right cardioid mic positioned in the right spot. 2. Live performances On stage, when sounds are coming at you from all directions, cardioid mics are great maintaining isolation and preventing feedback. Number 3. In a situation where you have untreated rooms, in rooms with poor acoustics, Close miking with cardioid mics can work wonders at minimizing reflected sound. Now, they might seem ideal in most cases, but cardioid mics do have drawbacks. The two biggest ones being number one, off axis coloration. With most cardioid mics, you see a drop in high frequency sensitivity as sounds move further off axis. This could be bad, for instance, with an inexperienced singer unconscious of his head movements. Number two, we have proximity effect, a phenomenon exclusive to cardioid mic. Proximity effect is a boost in bass frequency that results from extreme close miking. Using the same inexperienced singer example, you can see how this might also cause problems. Just a point of note, supercardioid and apocardioid pattern, while essential for filmmakers, are not commonly used in the recording studio. Next, let's talk about when to use the omnidirectional microphones. 
because they are also prone to off axis feel, omnidirectional mics aren't nearly as popular as they were prior to the invention of the cardioid pattern. But by no means does that make them irrelevant. For example, here are some situations where they are preferable. 1. When recording the sound of the room, such as with room mics for drums. 2. When recording a white sound source, such as an orchestra, choir, or grand piano. 3. When recording a moving target, such as an acoustic guitar player who can't sit still. 4. When recording in stereo, such as with the common AB technique. Compared to cardioid mics, omnidirectional mics offer the following advantages. 1. Humidity to proximity effect. 2. Lower self noise. 3. A frequency range that typically extends a full octave lower. 4. Less coloration of off axis sounds. This last advantage is especially true with small diaphragm omni mics. That is why most precise measurement microphones are small diaphragm omnis. And lastly, when to use the bi directional microphone, that is the figure 8. So, why exactly will you want a mic that was equally sensitive on both sides? It doesn't seem very useful, does it? The cliche example you always hear is to record a duet of singers facing each other. While it might be great in that situation, how often does that happen? Almost never. It's much more common to use figure 8 mics, that is, bi directional mics, for one of the following three reasons 1. For stereo recording, 2. With ribbon mics, 3. For maximum isolation of sounds to isolate instruments in close proximity. Bidirectional mics are ideal because they completely reject sound from the sides with smart positioning. You can achieve more isolation with a bidirectional mic than with any other polar pattern. One common trick is to place acoustic absorption at the rear end of the mic to block out any unwanted noises. That's it. So now that you know all the basics of microphone polar patterns, it's time to put this knowledge into practice. Why all these facts may be simple enough to, in theory, the only way to really get a feel for microphone polar pattern is to experiment. Take some time to record different instruments with different polar patterns in different rooms and listen to the differences in each combination. Eventually, you get a feel for what works and what doesn't. It's good to note that floor monitor placement differ depending on the pattern of the microphone. This shall be discussed extensively in subsequent episodes. This is how far we can run on this week's episode of Chat Sound Production Series. Next week, we shall be discussing the third class of microphone, which is microphone placement. Your comments go a long way. I'll be glad to know your opinion vis-a-vis -vis the topics discussed thus far. Furthermore, do you have questions relative to any of the tutor topics? Please feel open and unrestricted to drop them in the comment section. And I assure you that it shall be treated. Thanks for watching and please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't. Also hit the notification bell so you can be notified when there is a fresh video. Equally, like, share and comment. You can as well follow me on other social media handles as shown on the screen. Until I come your way yet again next week on Chat Sound Production Series, my name is Mark Adebayo. Bye-bye.